as a math and science teacher, and Source Media Group as a community so kind of a creative guy. And just to give you a few of the projects that the Big Idea School has worked on, because I think this is interesting, um, students who have participated in the program have worked on projects using trees to filter wastewater, a mathematical formula to interpret emotions, and the chemistry behind the perfect slice of bacon, which my mom would personally appreciate participating in that study. Um, but without further ado, Sean, if you'd like to talk with us today, the program is about a model for high school that puts community integration, student interest, and employability first. Let's welcome Sean to our meeting. Thanks. Um, so, I, I probably have the best teaching job anyone could ever have. Um, that student's bacon project won a purple ribbon. I say fair. Um, yeah, I didn't know there were purple ribbons uh, until this project happened. So uh, I want to take a, a rewind there and explain why we do what we do. And it's <coughs> it's really fortuitous to be addressing this group of kids on um, the Interact Clubs because big is essentially an academic extension of the concept of Interact. Um, our school, which is located in downtown Cedar Rapids at Vault Coworking, not the Vault. Ball, the bar, ball co-working, which is a very separate entity. We get that question a lot. Um, we're located in a co-working space, which is essentially a space designed for entrepreneurs. It's a, it's a shared office space. It's a shared lab space. Um, it's, it's a space where people are intentionally working together on separate projects for the purpose of creating something awesome. Uh, and our school is located there. Our students come there. Uh, and right now, we're, we're an elective office. So our students choose to take big as a part of their school. We have kids from Wash, kids from Kennedy, kids from Jeff, kids from Solon, kids from Mount Vernon, Lindmar, um, College Community, Iowa City, Heritage First Year. We have kids from all over um, who come to big to do academic work that is fundamentally tied to the community. And here's our model. Uh, we actually have somebody employed, someone who, whose job it is to go from business to business to organization to nonprofit to individuals and say, what are you working on? What is your business? What's the linchpin of your business? What is the product you produce? What is something you wish you could devote some man hours to and you just can't? What, what is that? And that person listens and they, they sit at Rockwell and they listen, you know, uh, we have a, there's a battery system that starts on fire every once in a while. Like, it'd be nice if somebody would take a look at this. Or uh, we, we had a project pitched to us from the Target Corporation uh, last week. Uh, you guys ever played the, the headband game where it uh, like reads your mind and you like, make a ball? <coughs> you know what I'm talking about? You play, it's called Mind Flex. Do you play this game? It's like, I mean, it sounds like totally sci-fi stuff, right? Yeah, like you, you put on this headband and it's got these two things that sit inside your head and make you like Princess Leia. And you like think, and it Bluetooths your, like, it doesn't really Bluetooth your thoughts. It Bluetooths the, the different waves that are happening that people have been measuring for years. Who tunes into this game and makes a ball float? You like fight the other person who's also wearing a headband and like try to get the, the ball to float by like concentrating. Um, Target pitched to us and they said, you know, uh, this game isn't that fun. You know, kids like it, it's interesting, but it's not that great. Um, and we're just sort of talking with this person who manages the toy department down at Target, and they're like, oh, you know, would you want to have one of these open and kind of play with it? And that's exactly the kind of project that students at Bay dig into. Um, and so we said, yeah, you know, we'll put that in our project. So that's the, our, our first step. This is how we, we operate our educational offerings. We say, let's bring something from business, from nonprofit, from organizations, from wherever, into the school. And let's allow the students to nucleate on that project. We didn't know. Would we have any students that want to hack this, like mind reading, headband open, get the information out of it, and design a new game that was actually more fun? Right now we have a couple eighth graders who have this thing hacked open and it's sending information down a USB cable into a MacBook, and they run a, a, a 3D tic-tac-toe game with it, which is actually really, it's kind of fun. I wish I had it with me. They're actually fixing it right now, back in fall. But uh, these are the kinds of projects. We don't know what our kids are going to do until the community pitches us an idea. And to me, that, that overlap between what you guys are doing, the service you guys are doing, and the academic component that Big adds to that, to me, that just seems so perfect. Um, what we find really interesting about it is that we're able to give credit to students after they do this work. 
we're able to say, you know, that project you did with this mind control headband, and this project you did where you were working with Department of Human Services on a statistical model for bus routes to serve homeless people better, and this project you did with the DNR, these are all real projects that kids have done, by the way. This project you did with the DNR, measuring fish kills during the winter, which by the way is going to be a serious problem because of the severity of the winter. This robot you built that you sent down under the ice to measure the actual young fish population for, this frozen, for these frozen lakes all over Linden Johnson County. Those projects added together as a teacher.